When this problem pops up, we really have got to consider picking numbers right away. That's a way to take these abstract problems, pick real numbers for the variables involved, and turn them into something concrete. Let's give it a shot with this problem right here. We want to know which of these answer choices must be an integer. We're given some specific information that we get in the questions that we must abide. We know that a over b has to be an integer, a cannot be equal to b, and a equals n times b. So at this point, let's just start with picking some numbers for a and b. Well, if a over b has to be an integer, a good number to choose for a would be like 4, and for b would be 2. We know we can pick these numbers because a divided by b, 4 divided by 2, is an integer, so we abide by the information we're given in the question stem. Next, we abide by the fact that a and b are not equal to each other, and a does in fact equal something times b. Essentially, a is a multiple of b. Now that we've got that, we would say, well, if a equals n times 2, well, then n would have to equal 2. We've now picked our three numbers for a, b, and n. Let's plug them into our answer choices. If we start with answer choice a, and if b is 2 and a is 4, answer choice a is not an integer. We want to find the answer choice that must always be an integer so we can eliminate the ones that aren't an integer. In this case, answer choice a is gone. When we go to answer choice b, n over a, that's going to be 2 over 4 again. And in this case, that's not an integer as well, so b is gone. Let's keep going. Answer choice C, we're going to get A plus 7, which is 4 plus 7, over B plus 7, which is 2 plus 7. We're going to get 11 over 9. That's not an integer, so C can't be our answer. So we look at answer choice D. A plus B over A. Well, all right, we get 4 plus 2 over 4. That's 6 over 4, not an integer. Without doing anything else, we know our answer choice must be answer choice E. We can check it if we'd like to and say, well, a times n, 4 times 2, divided by 2 is equal to 4. That is an integer. But in this case, since we could eliminate a, b, c, d as non-integers, our final answer must be answer choice E. So remember when you pick numbers in these scenarios and you're plugging those numbers into the answer choices, it's going to be very important that you don't just stop once you're like, oh, this is an integer, that's all I'm looking for. No, in this scenario, you stop when you've eliminated four answer choices as non-integers to confirm that your last answer choice, your fifth answer choice, must always be an integer. Not just sometimes, but always. Great work.